When did you leave the state with your daughter? Uh, I ended up leaving Arkansas. Um, I was there with family of Antonio's. Um, we were staying together. We ended up going our separate ways. I left to go find my own family in Arizona because Antonio's family felt that I was not a good parent. They felt that I did not have what it take to be a mom because I was been in foster care my whole life. I don't have no family. And they just felt like I didn't have what it takes. So I took my own steps. Did you feel that way? I agreed on some terms because I never had love. I didn't have a family. I didn't have parents. So I didn't know what to do. Or I was a new mother. I didn't know how to start or how, where I was even going to turn to. So I took it upon myself to go find my family to figure out how I could do this to the best of my ability. I reached out to my family. I been with my six months old pregnant and with my one year old on my hip I left and I went to Arizona and it started off good Antonio ended up coming out there um, but I ended up running into problems and issues with my family to where it just didn't seem it didn't seem right for personal reasons Antonio had to leave and go back to Arkansas so he left two days before it was time for me to give birth I gave birth April 15th at 10:35. Um, that night and it was to be the most beautiful thing I ever had in my life. Just to turn around, by April 20th, I was admitted back into the hospital with a fever of 107. My body was shutting down. My livers and my kidney was shutting down. I had um, deep thrombosis of the vein. I had blood clots in my veins that were traveling through my body. Um, my, everything was shutting down and it was a 50-50 chance that I was gonna make it. So I had to prepare for some family to come get my kids. One, one of my, my oldest daughter was in California with her family because for me to go in labor. And my family had my newborn, but they insisted that I leave the hospital to come get my child. So I was trying to go against medical advice to leave the hospital. So you have a 107 degree fever, your body's shutting down, and your family said, we don't care, come pick up your baby. Yes. So. Me being the mother I am, I said, I'm on my way. I went to leave the hospital to go get my child. And the doctor was like, what can we do to get you to change your mind? You need to stay. We, your, your body's shutting down. We need to get you into the surgery. What can we do to accommodate you to stay? Um, I told him, like, look, I need to leave. I don't know really what I can do. If you can help me with a walker, because I had lost feeling from my hip to my foot, I had to learn how to walk again and everything due to complications with having my child. So they accommodated me and they did that because I had to leave to go get my child and by any means I was gonna leave to go get my children. So I ended up leaving, going to get my child, but it turned into an altercation with my family. So we left and we went to California. When you say altercation, what does that mean? And me and my family, we had a big fallout because I told her she was wrong for making me leave the hospital. You didn't support me. You didn't have my back and I needed you. So. I left and I went to California. Um, at first, things were going good until I met an additional part of my family that I had never met before. It just was just a visit. Um, and it turned out that within that visit, everything turned for the worse. My family asked me to go wash the dishes. I was downstairs washing dishes. My child, she, my daughter, uh, she was upstairs in my bed sleep. I took my one-year-old downstairs with me. Wait, wait, uh, six-week-old was in a regular bed? She was in her boppy. What's a boppy? Um, it's like a little pillow thingy for that they give you for newborns. It's like a little comfy pillow. Um, but she's laying on a regular bed, though. Yes, because when I left, when I left, Arizona, everything that my family had helped me get, because when I left, I didn't have clothes. I didn't so have didn't nothing have for crib. my kids. My, my family took it back. Everything that they had helped provide what, for I my mean, kids. What, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but what is the deal with your family? Like, uh, you know, all families have problems. All families have, you know, uh, fights about things, and they get mad at each other. But what family makes their family member leave a hospital when they're severely ill? I've uh, been in foster care majority of my take life. Take stuff away from babies. She said I didn't, I, I, when she dropped me, she drove me from Arizona to California. And there was no room to pack all this stuff up in the car. So I asked if I could send for it. And she was like, no, you left it so you don't deserve it because you didn't want it in the first place. Okay. My point is uh, where, where I started down this road is, 
you know, between being a policeman and doing this show for many years, it seems like when the story begins with a baby not in a crib, bad things happen. Right. You know, children get, you know, oh, they were in a bed with me. Oh, I rolled over. I didn't know I was laying on top of my child. The child fell off. A dog jumped on the bed. Like, I've heard it all. That's why I'm saying it's, when I hear this, that the uh, six-week-old baby's not in a crib, it, it always kind of drives me wild. But you say you had a crib, it was taken away. Uh, continue. Yes, sir. Um, the, I, so she was in the bed in the boppy. I was, my, my goal was when my taxes hit, I was going to give me a new car, give me a new place. I could be a single mother and start off on my own. Nobody believed in me. Everybody said I couldn't do it. So my goal was to prove that I could. The same day my taxes hit, I was in the process of getting everything that me and my kids needed. That same day, um, like I said, family came over. My family was like, I need you to go wash the dishes. I went downstairs to wash the dishes because my baby had been asleep for maybe 20 minutes. So I had family upstairs with her as well. They was in the next room over, but they was upstairs because everybody was upstairs. I was downstairs washing dishes. Within five minutes of me coming upstairs, the little boy was walking out the room with my baby dangling like this, and she's crying. My other year old, year old. He said that the baby was crying, and he went and told one of my family members, and the baby was not crying, because where I was, even though I was downstairs, I could have heard her. The house, the walls are so thin, you can hear a pin drop. So I would have heard her crying. So I'm wrong for it, yes, but I talked to him like he was a grown man. Why the do you have my child? What are you doing? Um, the baby was crying. No, she wasn't. She was not crying. I would have heard her if she was crying. I'm asking the family, why does he have my child? What's going on? Why does he have my child? Oh, he said the baby was crying. She wasn't crying. My, one of my family members, she got to the baby first, but as I'm yelling at the rest of my family members, she says, why is the baby's nose bleeding? When I got to my child, both of her eyes were swollen shut. <sighs> Her mouth was busted and swollen from side to side. Her nose was bleeding. Her face was bruised from side to side. And she was crying so hard, she was turning colors. When I dealt with my first child, I never so much dealt with a diaper rash. I've never seen nothing like this in my life. I started panicking. I'm cussing. I'm yelling. I'm on the phone with 911. I got three people in the house on the phone with 911 at the same time. So multiple ambulance, police, everybody comes in. At the same time, we go to the hospital. I'm being asked a thousand questions. How do you not know what happened? You're your mom. How do you not know? All I know is that he came out the room with the baby in his arms. That's all I know. That's all I seen. By the end of it, the, I, the police officers came and they was like, so did, did, have you talked to the little boy? No, I, other than cussing him out, no, I hadn't. Um, well, he said that he hit the baby. The baby was being bad. He said he whooped the baby because the baby was crying. He, he spoke in riddles. He said that he drugged the baby across the street because the baby was being bad. He just talked in riddles and said different things. So they said that it was highly unlikely that a girl could have caused that amount of damage that either I did it or I'm covering up and I know who did do it. I'm here to find out if uh, Jasmine did harm to my child. I got a phone call from Jasmine and she was explaining to me uh, what happened to my youngest daughter, and she told me that my child has been harmed. My first time um, after the incident that happened, seeing my daughter, um, I seen her the first time with two black eyes and a bloody nose, uh, hemorrhage in the brain. I was very angry. Jasmine told me there's a child involved, and he had written a statement that he did harm my child. And I'm trying to figure out where's that paperwork, what CPS, what officer talked to this child, and I want answers. I don't feel that it was a thorough investigation. There wasn't any proof or any type of evidence that there was a child involved. I figure, you know, if this little kid has had my child like that, uh, why wasn't there any charges pressed or anything said during this case? My family has a lot of resentment against Jasmine because of the injuries to my child. And I, I, I hope that she's telling me the truth.
and she's not covering up anything. Well, if I found out that Jasmine is guilty of harm with my kids, we cannot have any type of communication or any type of friendship going forward. And um, I feel that you should be prosecuted and whoever's involved with you, prosecuted for what you did. You know I would never harm my child. You and your family did not stand behind me or defend me in anything. Y'all know I would, I love my kids. Jasmine, if you would have just took my child downstairs like you took my one-year-old, this would have never She happened. was asleep. If you would have did your part as a father and been there to help us, this wouldn't have happened. But you know that I couldn't leave. I couldn't just up and leave like I could. You did not I support us. You did not have our back. You left me there to defend our kids on my own. You left me there on a walker by myself. You took my kids, you belittled me, and made me out to be a monster. No, I did not. But like me, you know, we know the circumstances on why I didn't come. But like I say, if you brought the child downstairs, this would have prevented everything. And if you would have shown up, this would have prevented everything. And, and you're right. Do you think that uh, Jasmine did it? No, I think that um, she knew who did, and she's covering up due to. What? Why would she cover up for somebody though? I I wouldn't know. Like I got to like, know. She says she don't know. She don't. She didn't really know that family. Uh, family like that. And the so why would she cover she, up for him? Exactly. I, I, if she doesn't I know, know. Him, why cover up for him? I don't know my family. How well, do you, I not know my well, family? Know. Why would I cover up for my kids? No. When I would turn on you for my kids. I will turn into the devil himself uh, about what, my what, kids. What, How could you what, say man? that? Hey, Let what? me ask you this question. Is Jasmine a good mother? Uh, she's a great mother. Great mother. She's a great mother. So, you know, is she the kind of mother that would, you know, run in front of a speeding car to save her child? Yes. Yes. What then? Yes, yeah, she will. Okay. She so, will. Doesn't sound like somebody that would cover up for somebody hurting her child, does it? No, sir. Jasmine, you came here because you want to keep your kids. And we asked you, have you ever shaken your then six-week-old daughter? You answered no. Did you ever strike your then six-week-old daughter leaving marks or bruises? You answered no. Did you cause any of the injuries to your then six-week-old daughter? You answered no. Do you know for sure who caused the injuries to your then six-week-old daughter? You answered no. Were you being truthful in your statement you gave to medical professionals regarding how your daughter sustained those injuries that night? You answered yes. Did you fabricate the narrative that you told the medical professionals regarding how your daughter sustained those injuries? You answered no. So all six questions, the results came back the same. And to all six questions came back, the result is that Jasmine told the truth. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think a lot of people have failed you. His family, your family. I think people have not been understanding or helpful, and you kind of been out on your own. And you know, I'm gonna say this, uh, even to you, Antonio, you need to stay out of trouble so you can be there for your wife. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, because, you know, because whatever legal problems you got on, then you can't be there for her, and that doesn't help her. So everybody needs to take responsibility. You know, get to a place where you can, and I hope you get your kids back, I really do. I'm not gonna um, stop fighting, believe yes. that. Yes, and I, I, I want, you know, um, so this is, this is the couple months from now, and I want you to let us know what's going on. I wanna know. Uh, what happens with that date in May? Yes, sir. I want, I want, I want to know that you got your kids back, okay? Yes, sir. Good luck to you. Thank you so much. I called you, Steve, for help because I watch your show all the time. Somebody's gonna watch this and say, you know what? She was brave enough to do that. I can do that too. Do you want to tell your story on the Steve Wilco show? Visit the link in the description to get my help.